Hey guys, so it's a beautiful late afternoon, early evening, and I'm sorry that I haven't had anything out lately on YouTube. I've just been really, it's been kind of crazy here. I've been working on a thing at work, helping with a changeover, and so we've been doing that, and it's taken up a lot of time and effort, and I've been doing a lot of traveling for work, I've been doing vacation routes, and just everything, so... Those are the excuses. That's what I got. That's why I haven't really been uploading anything. I've got a lot of stuff filmed, but just haven't really had time to, or wanted to take the time to edit it yet, because uh, it takes a while to do that. So, one thing is, when I'm working, or when I go buy parts for something that I'm working on, I kind of keep my eye out for parts for other stuff as well. And, uh, that's the case right now. I've been working on this Tahoe and doing an intake swap, intake gasket replacement on it, actually. And uh, so I had to go to the junkyard for a few things. They're in another video. I'm not really going to tell you what that is. Just my, some minor stuff. One of my pretty good junkyards to go to. It's not really close here, but I get by there pretty often when I need something. And as a matter of fact, it's the same junkyard that had the dart in it that I got the parts for the dart a couple months ago and the junkyard that had that for the end over there so it's been a top producer <laughs> so I was up there getting the parts for this thing and I always make a tour through the old car section just to see what's in there and I noticed that there's a deer down there I noticed that uh the dart and the Oldsmobile that I'd picked over were gone. Well, in its place was a 1971 Dodge Demon that you saw in the thumbnail, a black one, slant six, very base car. My buddy, 30 years ago, had the same exact car when we went back and forth to, not that car, but the same exact duplicate. When we went back to and forth to school, and uh, it's funny because his car got T-boned in the right side, the passenger side, and that car had too. And I don't know where that black car that was in the junkyard had been in the last many, many, many years. But somewhere, because it wasn't all rusted out, it didn't look like it had been sitting outside, but it looked maybe under a lean-to or a barn or something because it hasn't, it wasn't in dry storage because it had a lot of surface rust on it. But anyway... I popped the hood open on that car, and I cannot believe my eyes because it was absolutely untouched under there. It looked like they had just pulled it out of the barn and put it in the junkyard. Everything was there. And that was a big deal for me because this car is not a demon. This is the 1971 Plymouth Scamp that I bought a year ago. And I bought it without an engine. They had removed the engine from it. It was a slant six, as I said. And uh, this is missing some stuff. And so I was going to have to put an engine together for it. I've got one I'm about to show you. But I was going to have to gather up a bunch of parts. So I started picking around on that Demon. And I was under-equipped with tools. I think I had some, I think I had some minor wrenches small wrenches and a adjustable wrench so the more i dug into it i thought well i'm not leaving here without this stuff or if i have to leave it i'm going to come back for it so i've actually made two trips to the junkyard and i got all of it now almost all of it but this was quite a haul and uh i'm going to show you what all i came up with and uh, i'm very happy about it because it's exactly what i needed for this so anyway, without further ado, I'm going to have to unload the, the thing here, park this truck, the car. But let me show you real quick while I was talking about the engine. So, we get a light on here. mentioned this before but my good buddy Jamie lives here in Tennessee 
donated this engine to me a couple years ago, may have been three years ago now, this red one. And this is a 1971 Slant 6 engine. And I know it's red, and I know it doesn't look like a 71 because this one was in, a, in his car originally, a 67 or 8 or 9 Dart that he had. Or Swinger, I guess it was. And so, I guess when they put it in that car, they had painted it and changed a few things around. It's supposed to look more like that one in the back back there. That's the one out of that green 73 Plymouth I had. But it is a 71. It sure is. So, anyways, you can see it's missing a lot of stuff on it. And I've got the intake to it over there. I had the intake off for something else. But it's got the wrong valve cover. And it's just missing stuff. So, um. None of that's here that I need, and I don't want to use it off that engine because that's not the correct stuff because that scamp is going to be, that's going to be a restoration, hopefully. It uses all the right numbers matching stuff. It's going to go back as a slant six, and I know some people are groaning right there saying, hey, you can't hear what no one knows with a slant six in it, but I do, so that's why it's going back. So I want to hunt all the parts up for it. So anyway, uh, those of you who like Slant 6 stuff, keep watching. Those of you who don't like Slant 6 stuff, you can just give a disdainful sniff and click off here. So let me get everything set up and we'll go through what we got. Okay then, so if you hear something in the background sounds like a drag strip, it's not the drag strip. They're having a truck and tractor pull in town tonight and I was almost going to go to that, but... And then I decided against it because oh, I've been in the junkyard all day and I'm kind of whipped. So, yeah, maybe next time. All right, so let's go look at this pile of stuff over here. So this looks, to the casual observer, this looks pretty much like junk. It's a pile of junk. And uh, maybe it is to some people, but if you're putting a car together, this is invaluable because when I started poking around that demon... I realized really quickly that that engine was looked to be all original, and so I started pulling things off of it that I needed, because everything I have to have is date coded from 1970 to 71 because of the scamps of 71, and the date codes are from anywhere from like August of 70 upwards to when that car was built. So that's kind of when I needed it, the stuff to be, and that demon was built in August, so. That was one of the very first 71 demons there was in existence. So when I start pulling all this stuff apart, I realize it should be all legit. And plus it makes good spares even if it isn't. So anyway, we're going to take a look at this and go through this. And the first thing is I pulled the starter off. And I wanted the starter anyway, even if it did not, if it was not the original. Because the cable is the original cable. Original ends on it, original wrap, original stuff up here. This is original. That's usable. These do not exist anymore like this. Anywhere. You can't buy a reproduction either, as far as I know. So, I scraped the numbers down on the starter, and it appears to be the original starter. It's pretty rusty up here on the field housing. But I did find, make out the number. This is, a, I think, a 287-68650 uh, is the number, I believe it is, or it's close. But that's the one they use on the 70s and 71s and part of 72. But the main thing is the date codes need to be there. Gear L. And they are. It says part way through 1970. So that's a 1970 starter. I'm pretty confident. I actually have another one about the same date code as a spare. So if this one turns out to have too many problems, I can just use that one. But there was some discussion about whether these starters were actually painted black 
early when they were original and pairs as they were because there's black paint on that solenoid it may have just been the solenoid housing and this could have been overhauled at some point you never know but so i don't know why it's kicked out the bushing back here but but it's okay it's uh it's definitely usable but there again it's a good original starter and you don't find those hardly anymore i have a real hard time finding those so the next thing I was looking at was the alternator. So I went up and pulled the alternator next and the part number, I couldn't find any references part number. The part number on it is 343-8389. And I'm pretty confident this is a 37 amp unit because that car didn't have air conditioning. I need a 46 amp unit, but this can be, this can be rebuilt and you know, into whatever I want. But it's got the right pulley on it. It's the pulley's in kind of poor condition, but it doesn't have the right pulley on it. But the main thing, again, is the date codes. So, here in the front, we got a, another 1970 date code. And... second 1970 date code and the hardware now you'll notice this is a this is a real hard to find alternator now because this is this one that the first alternators that i started using with an electronic voltage regulator the early ones were a grounded brush alternator means one of these leads was just grounded to the case but this has two leads and that's set up for the electronic alternate uh, regulator but it's not a square back. They called this one, I think they called this one an is, uh, isolated field alternator is what they call this. So it's different from the earlier ones. It looks like the earlier ones, but it is different and it's different from the later models. But one thing to note for sure though, look at this. This, this alternator has never been rebuilt because it has this rear bearing and that's, a, that's the original rear bearing. They only look like this with this, this nipple on it i guess you could say so that's amazing to me at least and it is seized up but that's no problem to fix all that so i'll put this back over here all right next up is a distributor i think that engine has a distributor in it but i'm not sure if it's the right one or not but this one is the original 70 distributor. There's part number 287-5826, rather. And there's your date code, 33rd week of 1970. And looks to be all there, all original. Look at that condenser. It's got that red condenser in there. It's not the original because it says Ashlyn. I wouldn't imagine it to be. It's probably been tuned up a few times. But that's a Mopar rotor button because it's got the Mopar number on the end of it. And getting ready. But look at this nice lead on it. Did you know they had a red plastic end on it? See, this stuff disappears. That's why this is priceless to me because this stuff disappears over time. People replace it with just generic crap and it's all gone. You don't know how it looked, how it was equipped. Okay. I don't feel like lifting this starter up right now. <laughs> so next up was the coil. So I pulled the coil off. And if you ever watch YouTube videos, especially an old Will It Run video, first thing that goes is the coil every time. Even though these things don't ever really go out, unless you leave the power hook to them too long and they blow up. But, but this one... Looks to be the original. It says 12 volt, used with external resistor. That's your part number. I didn't scrape all that off. I have to be very careful with this because you can't use any kind of cleaner or anything. You have to scrape it off like with a cloth, this gunk. That's the part, part number. It says marked distributor right there. And that one should be marked 12 volts, I think, is what's marked. But 
Here's your date code. 32nd week of 1970. It's another original part. And worth noting is that this thing has the the suppression capacitor on it, which it, it goes under that nut there on that side, and then that's under a bolt on the side of the engine block. I've never seen one on those. Now, that car has one, but i never seen one on a Slant 6 before, so there you go. I know exactly how this looks now. All right, as if that wasn't enough. Now, this is my old nemesis here. Get that out of the way. The Holly 1920 carburetor. But I've been having a real hard time finding the right carburetor for that. Because I do that, I shop for parts for projects I'm not even started on. So I'm getting parts together for that skimp, even though I'm no, nowhere right now, I'm nowhere near close to getting ready to do it. But, you know, if you find them, buy them. So this is a carburetor that should have been the original and it is the number on it at list number is 4656 and the date code is 216 of zero is that's 216th day of 1970 and i know it's probably the original carburetor because it has this hose on it the vent line for it with this clamp that you have to remove by force to ever take that off and that striped hose there now, I'm wondering about something. This thing had a junction in it right here with the hose that runs over uh, to the, it actually on these it goes to the fuel pump, believe it or not. Not the pressure side, but the fuel pump has a port in the top of it. And their idea was, is that they vented the vape carburetor vapors down to the fuel pump and the fuel pump conducted it into the, let it go into the crankcase and so that stored in there like a like a like a charcoal canister that wasn't one it didn't work very well it's probably not gonna work very, very well in this car but it is what it is it's original it's the way it is so that's what i had to have so we're going to make this thing work but that's the original 1971 carburetor and i got some stuff that that's probably oh yeah i got something else i gotta show you hang on uh here's a wiring harness this is the this is a passenger this is the charging system wiring harness it goes around the firewall back around from this is the alternator end of it by the way and the temperature switch it goes around and it goes that's where it goes into the firewall and then it comes around to the it ends up at the starter relay right here and you notice this thing's in excellent condition well, the one on the scamp out there is chopped off. When they removed the engine, they chopped it. Idiots. So anyway, had to have this. And this is another another thing that's getting extremely scarce to find now. And the only thing I'm going to have to do here is I may have to unwrap this partially and add the wire that goes to the air conditioning compressor because that car has air conditioning and this one that it came off of doesn't. But again... I'm not leaving that in the junkyard. There's no way. So there's that. I actually got this as well. This is the original distributor advance line. And this stuff's still in good shape. And if you get stuff now, it rots away in two years. That's how poor the rubber is that we have now. People will say, oh, it's not. But it is. I've put stuff on that Plymouth out there about two years ago and it's already cracking here he goes you know what that reminds me of that reminds me of that idiot that used to live down the street from me when i lived in Huntsville. that used to drive that dumb little truck back and forth all the time see when he did that that's what he heard when, when he went by, what I heard was <laughs> Here's the original temperature switch. I'm convinced it is, and I've never been out. So, I ask how many people have seen this. This is the prize. This was, I mean, darn bugs. 
I've never seen one of these physically in person in my life until now. Do you know what this is? This is on a slant six, this goes around the other way actually, but it goes around the positive battery cable and this slips over the, let me show you. I'm not gonna put it together because I'm not sure what kind of shape this thing's in. But it goes here. And it retains the back. I've never seen one. I didn't know they existed. I'm sure you can't buy them anymore, anywhere. So all of you who have slant sixes of that era, that probably got missing a long time ago. So that's gonna go up in a drawer someplace. Of course, that'll be after I ask the F FABO people if they know what that is. <laughs> Some of them will because they've seen the video, I guess. But all right, what else? Oh yeah, last thing is this thing here. This is a valve cover. That's that one has the wrong one on it. It's supposed to be this flat style, and it looks terrible. But uh, it's all there, and it has that two port, which looks kind of questionable. I think I have another one though, but it has that two port crankcase vent. Because again, this was part of this deal with the, the emissions, the fuel vapor stuff. So this is the one, there's a line that comes up to the firewall back there and comes along the inner fender a little ways. And this connects to it, it's a line from the tank. So the vapors out of the gas tank come up to this thing and then they get inhaled into the air cleaner. No, they don't actually, That's I'm wrong because this is the fresh air intake for the, for the crankcase breather. So the crankcase, PCV system sucks in right here and draws in fresh air right there and it's also drawing those vapors in and goes through the crankcase. Well, that's that. And then I was looking at this PCV valve, which I've never seen one of these. I don't know if this is an aftermarket that was put on years ago. It looks like it's got metal under it. Or if it's an original Chrysler part, I wouldn't be surprised because I've been smelling Something stopped up with this engine because I've been smelling vapor, like oil residue, all the way home, and I smelled it here. So I flipped over this valve cover. Look at the bottom of this thing. This thing is all sludged up. I mean, it smells too. It smells like oil, some kind of oily, gassy residue, and I think that's part of this. The cap fell off. The uh, I think that's part of the the effect of this thing. Something that that thing's probably clogged up. I don't know how many miles the car had on it because somebody already got the cluster out of it. But and one thing that got answered for me is if this thing is supposed to have a painted oil cap or a chrome one like this one does. And I investigated that, and that one's got blue paint on it. So that's supposed to have blue paint. And everything's good on that. It's going to have to have a tremendous amount of cleanup. And you can see where it had clamps on everything. A lot of times people don't put the clamps back. Come on. Hold her down, big daddy. There you go. So anyway, whoo, boy, this is overwhelming almost. But man, that poor car gave its last for, I mean, that, that car was hit. So you see the picture, that car was just caved in over there. The roof was buckled. No, there was not a piece of sheet metal on that car anywhere that was usable. So the engine stuff was the last hurrah for that thing. And I've not given up on this. This thing, let me give you a little teaser pick. This thing is ready for the windshield to go in, I would say. Aha. And Tahoe update, teaser pick. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, guys, well, that's what's going on in my little world here. And I'm really pumped up about this. You know, I just, uh, there's two things I didn't get that I need to get. This, I might go back for it, but not this weekend. This is a 71 manifold that goes to that engine, but it, that, this thing here has been swapped out because that's not the right one. The one that goes on it has a bracket here, but it's got two bolts and it bolts on 
Uh, it's got a big heat stove of a thing that goes around here. It looks like that one, but it's a much more complex than that one is. So see how that's bolted on right there? It's just like that, but it's a little bit different. So I don't want to use that one. So anyway, I got up there and true to form, true to form, I left the one socket that I needed, which is an 11 16 here and didn't have it. That's the rule I always live by is always forget one crucial tool when you go to the junkyard. But anyway, it's it's okay. I'm not, I'm all good with this because I'm it's just a, this is a blessing. So anyway, I wanted to share it with you guys and kind of show y'all if you're putting a slant six back together, especially a 70, 71, 72, how some of this stuff looks here original. Because as I said, there's some of this stuff I'm sure nobody's ever even seen before and they may not even know it existed. It's even supposed to be there. So. All right. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go in and call it an evening and uh, check out some YouTube, try to catch up on my comments. So I will see you very soon. Take care.